what other out of the department roles do you play? What do you mean? Out of department ro- like roles? Like, what do you do at, at home? <laughs> Just as <this> fun? <laughs> 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 Hey guys, I'm Nicholas and welcome to the first ever episode of 1075 Chatter, a podcast focused on everything from the emergency services and our upfitting. Throughout the episodes of this podcast, you'll hear firsthand stories from firefighters, police officers, and emergency vehicle upfitters. I hope you enjoy the podcast and let's dive right into our first guest, Drew DeGroat. Welcome back to 1075 Chatter. My name is Nicholas Harrison. I will be your host today. And as a guest, we have Battalion Chief from Company 3 and 5. Out of? Drew <laughs> DeGroat. Hello, everybody. Nicholas, how are you? Good. Good. Quick question. What's up? Is the Groat your father? What? The Groat. The Groot? No, Groot. The Groot. The Groot. The Groot. Like, I am Groot? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, that's why you're <laughs> <No>. the Groot. <laughs> All right. So, uh, are you a volunteer firefighter? I am. I am. What co- What town? Uh, Mawa. I'm out of Mawa, New Jersey. Um, been on the department since 2013. So, what, 11, 12 years now? I was still in high school. You're a youngin'. I was actually in freshman high school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a while, dude. But yeah, been uh been doing it for a while now. So So you are not my brother. I have a better face. Yeah, right. Better mustache. Right. And definitely a better hair. It's not what everybody at the shop says, so well, uh, everybody knows you're the Walmart we brothers. Did. Walmart brother. <laughs> I would say uh make a wish dot com, but the, I digress. You're talking about yourself though. So. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you're lower than Walmart. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what made you become a volunteer firefighter? Uh, Would you push say? So my grandfather was the battalion chief in Mawa. My father's a firefighter in Mawa. So kind of just came down the line to me and it's just something I grew up around. I grew up around so, the firehouse. So. so you lived in the firehouse? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, volunteer wise, yeah, it's, you know, going to calls and, you know, buffing the calls. I remember being young, my father would take me in the fire truck um, and it just kind of grew. It just, you know, something I love to do now and I continue to do it. So. And how, do, how does it feel being a battalion chief as and being in your grandfather's shoes? Um, it's, it's cool. It it really is. I, you know, I look up to my grandfather a lot, so it, it means a lot. So hopefully it's making him proud and making my grandfather proud and just keep going. Besides being at the firehouse, what else do you do at home or adventures? Um, I just outdoorsy. I'm always outside, always doing something. You got the side by side, the razor. So I'm always out on that or, you know, hunting and, you know, I like being outside, so. Would you hunt legally? Illegally? Legally. Legally? Legally. Oh, illegally you, but legally <laughs> deer. Uh, I'm more of a, a deer hunter. Okay. Usually uh, hunt bear? No, never been bear hunting yet. That's uh, something I've always wanted to do, just haven't done it yet. Why don't you do it? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe I'll look into it after this. <laughs> A lot of permits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a lot more money too. What would you say you would like to see changes in the future? Changes with the department? With the whole volunteer or volunteer fight. wise? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the way it is, the way it used to be, and the way it's going are completely different now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back then they used to ride the back step. Now <laughs> you can't even have your gear in, in the truck. It's gotta be in a separate compartment. So it's it's going to be a change. You know, I don't really, I, I like where it's at. Um, you know, I mean, it's strict, It's but it's also for everyone's safety. You know, between the physicals that you have to do, it's, you know, there's a lot of guys now overweight and they can't do half of the stuff that, you know, some of the, the skinnier guys or the, the lightweight guys can do. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not healthy. You know, it's you see a lot of uh, heart attacks and a lot of strokes and it's just, you know, so... 
as long as everyone stays fit and stays healthy, I don't really see a need to change anything other than just keep these guys healthy. Yeah, and we see more and more with OSHA and all the rules that's starting to come out with. Yeah. Where they're getting a lot stricter, which I'm for change, which it's good, but a lot, I mean, if we're not helping out, we'll just make it more stricter, and then you just lose the a department because there's so much strict guidelines between gear training and yeah correct we need training but i mean how much training are you gonna throw down someone's throat till you can't yeah can't get the manpower the amount of hours that you need to do now just to be fire one i mean it's a full commitment it's 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 it really is. it's it's crazy right now and nowadays you have people working two jobs at night yeah you can't afford to live right now and you know doing this nighttime or daytime whatever these people are doing it's yeah. it's a full commitment and, and i commend all volunteer firefighters and everybody that puts the time in and they're yeah, actively absolutely. putting two i know a guy that he's working two jobs and he's still active yeah so yeah, it's, it's it could be done but it's it's struggling yeah no it's it's definitely a and lot right we're now we're losing a lot of volunteers just because of that yeah, no, and it's, you know, it's it's everywhere. I see it everywhere. You know, you can't get the manpower because, you know, these guys are working two jobs, like you said, and, you know, th it's just, it's a lot. So you can't get the manpower that we used to. I mean, in my department, you know, we, during the day, are going to two company dispatches. Mm -hmm. So two companies per call, depending on the zone, is who goes because you just, you can't get a truck out. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost impossible right now, so. I mean, our tr first two truck is old timers that are retired basically during the day because all the young guys are working are working yeah so we're in school or you know it's it's the same by me and i'm pretty sure it's the same everywhere oh know? yeah with drills and going going to calls meetings it's the same yeah. guys and you know you know who's in it yeah and who's not yeah that's that's but. for sure i mean again you see it everywhere it's you know not just my department it's but but you can't just say some guys aren't in it just because they can't show because they can't show up they have kids they they have jobs i mean i it, it's something we got to understand yeah and you know you can't be you can't be down on these guys that aren't showing up as much because of you know they you know they know that family comes first and they have to survive first and yeah. you know firefighting kind of comes second but you we know, don't get paid yeah right i mean <laughs> well some of us I, yeah. you know my town ended up going to a stipend so now we're getting paid per call which okay. is which is nice you know it's a nice little incentive to you know start responding to more calls but start get the guys out and yeah maybe that's, that's show really what it is initiative of saying hey we're gonna give you this much a call and then people maybe be like okay maybe it's a little worth it just extra mu cash in my pocket. Yeah, and it is. It's, you know, gas money or, you know, maybe some money for your car insurance. It, like, it could just be anything. It's just a yeah. little bit of cash to, to put in your pocket and, you know, kind of like a thank you for coming. Basically, yeah. So, it's, you know, that's nice. But um, for the guys that don't get paid, you know, or are just strict volunteer and they're just getting their, their clothing allowance or, and their low sap, it's, you know. Yeah, that's basically my town is we get clothing allowance and low sap, but. Yeah, I mean, and we're hurting with guys. Yeah, so it's, it's it's it sucks. And but you know, what are you gonna do? You know, you just keep recruiting, keep keep posting on social media, and try and get these these kids to to come join and yeah. you know make it fun. Really, I mean, we that, do it. That's the biggest part. I think is making it fun as training and staying at the firehouse, and you know the camaraderie of the firehouse, the brothers and sisters, how we all get together i mean i think honestly that part with covid kind of went down a little bit yeah yeah i, I could agree with that but it's, it's still there yeah and absolutely. it's nice that it's there yeah i you know like i said it's just got to keep pushing got to keep going forward and hopefully things get better but yeah. you know we just got to get these guys trained and keep it moving out of your 11 years, do you have any uh, memorial uh, or moments that you enjoyed on the fire department? Calls, drills? Um, you know, our drills being 
younger, um, when I first joined the firehouse, um, our battalion chief was or is uh, in the military. She's in the Army. So um, she made it a lot of fun. She made drills a lot of fun. Um, we'd cut up a lot, and you know. But we also knew when the bell rang, it's time to go to work. But to make the drills fun and, you know, kind of mix in different scenarios, right? Mm-hmm. So even if you're just doing a regular rolling response, pretending that there's, you know, a fire, you know, or a fire alarm at the fire out, you know, at the house, um, you know, she'd cut up and, and, you know, come running out. You know, my kid's in there, you know, just kind of making it more of a scene and making it more mm-hmm. hectic just to try and keep us more calm, which was nice. You know, it definitely, it helps out. But, you know, being um, professional with throughout the whole thing and, you know, not telling the lady to, to shut the fuck up and get out of my way, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, you have to be responsible and stuff like that. But, you know, being at the firehouse Wednesday nights is was always a good time. It still is. I You know, I try and being battalion chief now, I, I try and do it with my guys now and, you know, just try and make it fun, try to make it so that they come back and, you know, we have fun, but when we know, you know, when the bell rings, we know it's time to go to work yeah. and it's it's time to, to suit up and, and go. So, but between that, um, being way younger, you know, like I said, being with my father, my grandfather, um, being at the firehouse then and, you know, just sitting in the truck and just that excitement, you know, listening to the, the sirens and looking at all the lights and stuff like that. It was just, you know, it was a good time. So, um yeah, it's it's really, you know, it's about it. But uh, fire-wise, nothing really, you know, there's never really a good fire for yeah. the family. It's it's always a good fire for us. So, I mean, we've, you know, seen our fair share of fires. And like I said, our whole department coming from five different companies and five different ways of things running – we really do come together very well, and we know what to do. We know, you know, put the fire out and save what we can, and that's, you know, that's what we do. Hello? Hi. What's up? Yeah. Yes, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Who's he calling me? I'm call you. Who? <laughs> Mark, I thought he wanted something. What does he want? Do you know? He wa- I think he wanted to do a, like a conference call. Hello? Who is that? Who is this? Mark? Yes. Okay, hold on. Go ahead. What up, people? <laughs> I'm back on the air. Yeah, for those who don't know, it's it's Mark again. What are you guys talking about? Fire stuff. Talking about how ugly you are. Thank you. You'll never guess what. What? I'm on top of a fire truck right now. Oh, nice. What are We're you doing, doing to the it? the best light upgrade that has ever existed in the history of light upgrades. Mm-hmm. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> what, a light bar? Yeah, a light yes. bar. Yes, how did you cool. know? <laughs> It's an N fuse by sound off signal. I don't know if you ever heard of it. N fuse XL. Oh, double stack. Oof. Yep. Just made some spacers. Drilled a bunch of holes. Sealed a bunch of holes. Yeah. Uh huh. Nice. Good job, guys. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Cool. Bye. Goodbye. What does the fire department have? Volunteer fire department have the impact on the com- community? Um. It depends. Really, it depends on where you're coming from. I mean, you see the stuff down in Maryland. You know, they, I mean, from a firefighter standpoint, isn't the right way of doing things necessarily, but to them, it's the right thing. But it really. Don't say names. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But it it depends. It depends on where you're from and how you act. It's, you know, if you act professional and, Mm -hmm. you know, do the right thing and, you know, you're not a whole bunch of jabronis it's it's uh it's a good thing you know you know we see it all the time like when we go to fire prevention events or even just our you know our mawa day um it's a lot of thank you for your service thank you for what you do you know you just you kind of stay professional but you know you see it online all the time that some guys just act up and it just doesn't look good for the volunteer department it's and of course it's 
broadside right up front volunteer fire department yeah did yeah. this or i mean we have our bad ones even the paid guys do and it just gets more noticed when it says volunteer because it's well more was it 95 percent of of the country, of the country yeah. is volunteer. Yeah, something like that. I don't know what the no, the you know the actual number and, is, but yeah. And if you look at the numbers, I mean, I would say your taxpayers would be t- paying a lot more if we weren't volunteer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's been talked about. You know, going paid, and it's just you can't. Yeah. Because it, it, it just costs millions. The taxes would be with would the, be with astronomical. The over time paying the manpower it's it'll kill the town yeah no it really will and it's you know something that we try not to do we try and stay volunteer and you know it's just trying to save the taxpayers a couple more dollars yeah so um yeah i mean you know the what we do for the community impacts a lot you know it it says a lot to to the community and we just have to like i said stay professional stay yeah even though we are a volunteer, you, you still need to be, you're still technically an employee of, of the township or the city or wherever you're working or volunteering. It's, you know, you just got to, you are the face of, of that fire department. So just stay professional and, and keep it clean. So we're going to start with now is how did you find 1075 and why did you want to work here? So do you want Was to... it because of this face <laughs> or? No, actually you weren't even part of i mean you were part of 1075 but you weren't doing videos or anything no, yet we were not doing videos um do you want the truthful answer or do you want the funny answer because so right now i want the truthful answer the truthful answer <laughs> um i was hurt due to an injury at my previous job i searched on indeed it was you know something again growing up around these lights and sirens it's something that i've always tinkered with at home anyway um, and then I saw the opportunity at 1075. You guys, you know, the whole company has worked on my department's vehicles. Um, and I know 1075 was a great, great company. And I, you know, knew that was something that I would be interested in doing. And I applied, had the interview with Matt, and, you know, everything went well. And here's my pretty face. Yeah. And then we're stuck with you. Yeah. And how, how long have you been working with us? Uh, just about two years now. Okay. And any with those two years, have you found what build have you found that you've liked or um liked that I've done that you've done? Well, Christopher, if you're listening or watching this, uh, <laughs> your Ramsey DBW truck was a real pain in my ass, but that truck came out pretty nice. Um, I love that truck. I think it was a cool truck. I think it was a cool build. Uh, that truck definitely challenged me a lot, um, especially when it came down to the programming. Yeah, and that, you did it with that, me. That, and was, that was that was a headache. I was playing with Phoenix and Blueprint. That was totally uh, yeah. not normal. But it's, no, that that truck came out pretty neat. That was a cool truck. Um, you know, it's every truck or every car, or every build is something different, and it's something new, and it's something you know, it has its little challenges here and there, and it's you know, it makes the job fun. Um, keeps you on your toes, keeps you thinking, and that's something that you know I like to do is is to stay active and keep my brain going. So that's you know why I like well, this job. Keep going, you might get smoke out out of your ears, but <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes <laughs> you can definitely get some smoke out of your ears here. <laughs> um, but you know, it's 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 fun, you know, and it's like Matt said, it's it's a very family oriented business. Totally, it's honestly. Like the firehouse. Yeah, no, We're, it really is. We might not have full, everybody is a f- uh, firefighter, but it still shows, like, how the commodity. Camaraderie. Camaraderie with all those uh, co-workers, non-volunteer or volunteer, and how we just make it work. And when it comes to where we got to work, just like the fire, I was, if we gotta go, we gotta go. We gotta, yeah. s- we gotta walk. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's fun. It's a lot of ball busting. It's, but like you said, when when it's time to work, we go to work and we get it done. So it works out pretty well. Yeah, it's you know, it's fun. I enjoy coming to work every day. And yeah, that, and that's you know what maybe the, the biggest thing about a job is being able to come to work and 
actually enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it's not like, oh, I got to deal with these assholes. It's Yeah, no, that's, that's Oh, I huge. get to bust this kid's bo- <laughs> yeah. chops now. Yeah, I mean, you know, doing the 10 hours and, and doing the alternate Yeah, I know, um, you leave me off. Friday and Mondays. Uh, yeah, like- so I'm off for four days. And, you know, by Saturday, Sunday, I'm like, damn, like I still got <laughs> one more day off. And it, it's kind of like, you know, you hear these paid guys, like I can't wait to go back to work. And it's it's kind of the same thing. I yeah. You know, I can't wait to go back to work on Tuesday. And I'm like, oh, great, Drew's not in Monday. Yeah, see yeah. Nick and, you know, bust your balls a little bit. So <laughs> it's it makes it fun. The job's fun. It's, it's fun to come to work even if it is early in the morning you know it's yeah. a gas crack at dawn you know it's six o'clock in the morning i but again i come in five five thirty and it, i don't mind waking up early and knowing that i'm going to a job that i actually like you, to you do. gotta get your dunkin first and your little latte of course man no it's not even a lot and now it's this new uh sparked energy drink that's, oh excuse yeah, me I, if you haven't had one try and, one and what a uh, coffee roll or yeah coffee roll or bear claw <laughs> yeah he has my calls and bear claws. Bear claws. Yeah. Well, he's a cop, so. Well, it makes sense. And his he donuts. knows all the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and with the, having a new management as adding the conversion manager, it's pretty awesome to with with him coming in and just clicking in. It was like yeah. he was. It was never like Mike a, is. He's a, a he's a cool dude. Yeah. I mean, coming from. A police chief, um, you know, he comes in and he breaks our balls just as much as we break his. Yeah, and, and he just, we all take it and we all give it. Yeah, and yeah, and it just it works out. But, again, when it's time to go to work, we go to work. And, you know, he does a good job at it. Um, but, you know, it's it's fun to have that that fun atmosphere. I mean, we haven't had our donut meeting lately, so yeah, you we know, got to bug him about that. After the whole incident that we had with that one guy, it's – we haven't had him pay for donuts or <laughs> breakfast. Or, Mike, we miss it. We want so donuts and coffee. Bring them back, please. I don't want to get fat, but. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, Mike's Mike's a good dude. You know, it's he's just like another brother. You know, it's. it's yeah. He makes everything He's fun. the chief of the, of the 1075 tech shop. And with the firefighters, yeah, yeah, basically. you can pretty much think of it like that. But no, he, um, like I said, he makes it fun. It's just enjoyable to come to work every day and do what we do. You know, it's it's fun, and to see these builds out and on the road, or even in the showcases. Yeah, it's it's, it's awesome to to know that we s- built that. Yeah, and or you're driving down the highway and you're like. I built that. Yeah. I send you pictures of yeah, Frank Lakes me, all the time. Yeah, and I was. It's uh, like listen. You could you see how some people build things, and then you look at our build and how we think about the safety of the officer. And then I noticed with the flash patterns. Yeah, it makes I a know, huge difference. It's an eye catcher, even with a slower pattern. It's yeah. an eye catcher. Um, but yeah, you're right with thinking of the safety of the officers too. It's you know when I first came here and was learning the whole programming and and learning a door cut when you open the door to turn off some of the light bar. Um, it's not something I really would have thought of yeah. until coming here, and it's it's smart. It keeps the lights out of the officer's eyes and keeps him kind of focused on what he needs to do instead of being blinded by all these lights. And, you know, these lights are just getting brighter. Yeah, they, it is. They make them bigger, 7x3s, 9x10s. Yeah, they're it's huge. I mean, we huge, can make some big brighter. lights. I mean, how much brighter can you go? That's that's a big question. And Yeah, exactly. Until you and start blinding people and they start hitting <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, keeping, keeping the officer safe is, is huge, whether it's, you know, it's police or fire, um, doing these, these little things that we do to these cars and, you know, it, the way I kind of think of it programming wise is how would I want my car? Exactly. I, I, all these builds, I mean, I've gone, I've done the big builds and I've started to go to the smaller builds, just do how we're trying to do everything. And that's when I go well, this if this my truck, how do I want it? How yeah. how would I want this set up? How yeah, how how can I stay safe? You know, even with all these blinding lights. Yes. You know, and and like we we started implementing 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 implementing. Uh, yeah. Don't don't get me started now because I'm under. <laughs> <laughs> implementing, uh, the brake where you ha- where you hit the brake. And it slows the pattern down, and I think honestly that's hum- humongous. 
especially yeah, it is huge because I've been behind a couple people going to a call, and they have a bunch of lights in the back of their truck. Yeah, and, and they're just going all crazy, and you and don't know I'm when like, they're breaking. I don't see, and I'm like, dude, I don't see you breaking. I, I can't. He has the turn signals where they go off. I could see that. That's fine. But like his brake, all the flashing, I, I don't even notice. Yeah, like he has it. The hideaway is shut off when he breaks, but like the light bulb on the back and the under the bumper is like. I didn't even know she was trying to brake. Yeah, yeah. But and it's, you know, changing the pattern on the brake and, and making it slow yeah. is, is way bigger because it's even from a civilian standpoint. And Jack and I just had this conversation. Him him coming from, you know, just not being a firefighter or anything yeah. like that and then just coming into our shop, he never noticed, like, the slower patterns for Park Hill or – the brake, you know, slowing down the, the when you're on the brake and stuff like that. He never noticed that. But now, you know, seeing it and seeing what we're doing, he's like, yeah, now, like, I'm on the road and I see these things, and it's huge. And, you know, just your regular Joe Schmo is not going to notice that. But no. at first, but then when it comes down to it and these cars are braking on the highway and getting ready to pull over for the, for the scene, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's eye-catching. It, it really State is. troopers do it. I see it all the time. I mean, they have it a little different. They just have everything turned on. Yeah. It's weird, but, hey, I'm you know, not going to knock zone, it down. You know, yeah. it's it's really, again, and I, I think with 1075, we kind of have somewhat of freedom um, with programming. Of and, course, And yeah. kind of, like, customizing these cars and, you know, obviously make it the way the customer wants it, but adding our own little touches to it and doing things like that, whether you're shutting off lights or slowing down patterns and stuff like that. It, you know, it's and, and we do have customers that do have exotic requests sometimes. And yeah, some. I mean, the the Philip sixty six truck that that we did with the yeah. boat seat that was that was a new one. That was that was pretty cool. That was a, again a challenge, but um, yeah, I mean, you get these these crazy requests and stuff like that, and it's you know you kind of just have to let it be, and you know the customer's always right. That's that's right. You know, they're the one paying the big bucks for them. So yep. we got to, you know, do it that way. But I mean, we could guide them. We could guide them on, like, how we do things at 1075 and what we prefer. But if the customer doesn't want it and the customer wants a certain way, we'll do it. I mean, yeah. we'll pretty much customize to the customer. Every that's, build. that's really, that's it. I mean, it, you know, depending on their, their um, jurisdiction and their district and stuff like that, um, for example, Walden, they're, you know, upstate New York. It's a little darker up there. Um, so even just changing our, the, the turn signals um, and using the link and stuff like that, we're able to turn off the taillight during the day and just have it flash the the amber turn signal. And then at night when the turns, when the parking lights are on, now that, that rear ring, you know, that parking light is still on and still visible for, for other customers or not for other customers, for, you know, bystanders and, you know, stuff like that. So it, those little tweaks and, and changing stuff like that is, is huge. Um, and it's just something that we have to think of jurisdiction wise or district wise and where they're, they're coming from. Yeah. Um, it's totally different from the city to the countryside because yeah, if you do something like that in the city, you're not going to notice it. You really, I don't really think anyone's going to notice. Oh my God. You know, the, the parking light's still on when the blinker's on or it's off when it's on. But, you know, being up there, it's a little bit more noticeable. It's a little darker, and it's, yeah, you know. Yeah, city, you, no one's moving. It's, yes. I mean, I don't care how many lights, how many sirens you have. It's that person. If they don't want to move, they're not going to move. Yes. I mean, and you, you now see with these the new, guys. The new cars, the making with the soundproofing. I mean, honestly, last week I was making a right turn, and when I was on that road, all of a sudden I saw a cop behind me. I'm like, I didn't even hear him coming. Nothing. Yeah. All of a sudden, he was in my rearview mirror. Yeah. And then I and then I hear the siren. I'm like, okay, I got to pull over. But at first, I'm like, where'd you come from? Yeah. Like, no, it's... it was literally clear for a mile. And all of a sudden, he's behind me. I'm like, where'd you come from? Yeah, like, where'd you come from? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the aftershock makes a difference. Um, we'll see what sound off or any other competitor really has to come out with. Um trying to pierce through these these soundproof cars just a little bit more yeah I, I think aftershocks pretty much they they do wonders i mean don't get me wrong that they're doing great but you know the quieter these cars get the more sound off and and 
other you know other companies are going to have to to improve and kind of figure out ways to get the noise through to these cars is it going to help because you know most drivers are brainless anyway yeah and they don't you know they don't care when it comes to lights they it's, it's like you'll have a road closed they take that road 10 for 10 years and there's back roads and all that and they they know that that route and god forbid you close that down oh, for yeah, an hour about it. <laughs> they're like over. what do i do how do i turn like are you kidding yeah, me no and you know they see all these lights and these sirens and all this chaotic scene going on and some people just don't know how to act and they you oh know. yeah we had i had a woman we were at a uh, a fire we had supply line laid and all that and this woman's like i gotta get to my house i'm handicapped i'm like ma'am we we have an active fire going on you can't the it's cross the roadway and she tries to go over the the hose i'm like yeah now she doesn't realize and that's that's another I'm like thing. you realize you can be putting firefighters that are in the fire yeah in danger, in danger. Or, or kill them and they don't and they don't realize that. all she was worried about is, is getting, getting home, home and she had to use the bathroom yeah i go we can help you get to your house yeah it, but you can't just drive over yeah, our hose yeah and that, you know you no, see it on that the doesn't happen all the time you see it on the internet all the time that this is happening but even you know these guys in fdny you know the the stuff that they go through, it's it's taking oh, yeah. them forever to go two blocks because no one's moving, you know. And as much lights and sirens as you put in these cars, it's, it's the same thing. It's no one's gonna move because they got somewhere to be too. Yep. You know, it's it's. They don't care. They it's, who cares? It's not their emergency, but then when it comes to their emergency, they're like, oh, why is it taking so long? Yeah. And then they, then some of them, I hope, realize that, hey. Maybe I should be more attentive when I'm driving. Yeah, and you know it's it's maybe it's not just me, but it's you know everywhere and anyone that I drive with. If you hear lights and sirens, pull all the way over. Yeah, and just stop. It, you know, it, it's taking three seconds out of your day to just stop and you know let this car go by and let them get where they need to go. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't do that. It's you know kind of a sad sight, and you yeah. know. Unfortunately, there's a lot of car accidents that happen and, you know, working on major highways and stuff like that, especially, you know, 287 where no one's doing 65. Um, you see a lot of these bad accidents and we've unfortunately been to a few of them where they don't really end well. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really seen safety. So coming into, you know, these lights and, and the slower patterns and having a link and even syncing all of these cars together. Do you like sync? <laughs> Do I like sync? <laughs> yes, I know. Um, coming from, you know, 1075 and an upfitter and, you know, stuff like that, yes. Um, because it's it serves its purpose. It does. It calms the scene down. I Okay. Let's not even say it calms the scene down. <laughs> it just makes all the these. The officer calms these, the scene down. Yeah. It makes all of these lights and all this chaotic nonsense going yeah. on. It kind of settles that a little more. I agree. Um, and it's a little more eye soothing, so that these cars and you know these passerbys can get through yeah. um, and understand. You know, it's it's not just all blinding lights. It's now a little you know more like a street light. Yeah. Right? So it's you know kind of calms everything and it makes it a little easier. Um, I do like that coming from you know it more of like a civilian side or you know coming from my parents or my mom for instance she's not going to notice the difference it, yes it's a little more soothing but again she's not going to be like oh my god you know look at all those lights they and, you know, they, they, they're all flashing the same time <laughs> and the same color and but it's it's a cool concept it's it's neat um is everyone going to understand it no but again, it's it's kind can't of can't make everybody happy. It's just helping with scene safety, yep. really, is is what it does. And I mean, it does it does a good job. And especially if we can get a fleet um, to do this. I mean, we've you know been doing a few of the same builds. Franklin Lakes has been starting to to do this, and you know, getting their cars to the same program, the same yep. flash pattern, everything like that. It helps out so much, and uh, you know. I just saw it on Facebook the other day. I don't know if you saw it, the uh, the advertisement that Soundoff put out with the fire trucks. No. 
Yeah, so they, they just put one out. It's a whole, not that type of wacko, man. <laughs> um, it was, I don't remember what department it was, but they did all their Chiefs trucks okay. and, and the fire And the engines. fire trucks were Blueprint 2? Yeah, were through Blueprint 2. And just watching these things come down the road looks pretty badass. It, it is. It, honestly, it does look badass, for, especially in a uh, going down the highway with the chief vehicle and a fire truck sinking i mean it's pretty cool it is it is pretty neat um but again is everyone going to notice that no, no but is it eye catching to buffs, us yeah buffs, to us buffs yeah buffs that, that's, and that's pretty badass and yeah. especially you know paid departments where they kind of match their trucks yeah um you know all their trucks are almost identical right so if you're going from one station to the next it's almost the same setup and to have that you know, uniform and then have these lights kind of uniformed as well. It's it's a pretty pretty cool feature that, that sound off has done and you know, it's it helps. It does help. Do you, now with your future career into ten seventy five, do you what are you looking into more? Do you wanna build do you wanna build more bigger apparat like bigger builds or do you like police the police cars? No. No. I no. hate police cars. <laughs> um, you're just jamming 10 pounds of shit in a five-pound bag. Don't get me wrong. They need this stuff. Yeah. You know, they need the computers, the laptops, you know, the printers, you know, the radars, the cameras. I get it. Yeah. But building them sucks. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, my future here is I don't plan on going anywhere. I plan on, you know, Mike, I'm coming for your job. <laughs> That's where I want to be. Um, I just want to keep moving up. I just want to, you know, don't get me wrong. I love building. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just progressing within the company and making this company bigger and stronger and, yeah. you know, just keep moving forward. Um, but right now, I am I love where I'm at. I love busting your balls every day. I love coming to work <laughs> and, you know, bothering you and, you know, everybody else at the shop and, you know, just having fun. Well, you need to get real sneakers now so I could untie them and tie them again. No, I'm never leaving these slippers. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, keep your shoes on, you keep your <laughs> shoes. I'll keep my slippers with my little, uh, my little straps or whatever you want to call them. Your hey-do's. Yeah. Hey-do's with, uh. Well, it's not, like, you know, like I get copyrighted or anything. Uh, they're hey, hey-do's <laughs> with, hey uh, dudes. composite toe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm. What well, are you well, trying to s- s- rest? Of course. I mean, the more comfortable you are at work, the better you work. True. Unless, you know, you're you and you crawl underneath the truck somewhere and fall asleep, but. Well, we don't talk about that. I mean, <laughs> that's shop talk sometimes stays quiet. Yeah. But. You're not quiet, though. No, but if, listen, if my career as a singer jumps, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have a different you're career. Just, you're just going to jump ship here? Yeah. Hey, I, if my, my singing career takes off. I think it will work. Oh, you know my God. singing. Yeah, it's it's not great. If you guys ever come down to the <laughs> shop and hear Nick singing, run the other way. Christmas carols. Yeah, it's always Christmas. Christmas in July. Christmas in de- oh. you know December. <laughs> August. It's, it, it, any time of the year, it's this guy singing Christmas carols. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's it's sometimes funny to listen to and you know make fun of it, but. You do get annoying with that. <laughs> oh, I bet I do. And it was funny is because I'll be at the gym and I'll hear this guy singing. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's, like, it, what that's the exactly fuck? what you yell at you. At, and I guarantee you, I'm like, do I really sound like that in the shop? Because I guarantee you I do. <laughs> yep, that's you. But, hey, like I, I say to a lot of people, if I can't get anything accomplished that day, the only thing I get accomplished is make someone laugh. You tuned I, up your vocal cords. Tune up my vote, vote cause <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah. Like if I can make someone, someone else's day better, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, you know, we all have our days at the shop, but. Oh, of course we do. We're human. We're going to have you know, ups and downs. And We're going to piss people off. When you come to me and I'm on one of my down days and you come up to me, you kind of just always make it a little bit Listen, better. I'll it's stop either you I want to wring your neck or. Listen, I'll slap you your head and laugh. say, get back into it because <laughs> it ain't. You're not dead, right? Yeah, exactly. No, and it's, you know, and c- coming to work and, and making somebody's day is is just a plus. Yeah, you know, coming to work and you know busting balls and having. I fun try to keep my singing to a limited now, but why? Because you're like manager now. No, 
your nighttime shift supervisor. Yeah, what, what's going to happen when I go to night shift? <laughs> go, good riddance. <laughs> See you later, because I'm not going. I'm staying with the day Might shift. I have to pursue, persuade you. Mm, no. No, I like sleeping at night. You are sleeping at night. Yeah, 10 o'clock at night. Okay, what's the well, difference? More so like your 11, days 12. your days are flipped. Yeah, I'm not. And an guess owl. what? I could go to the grocery store with no crowd. So can I. I don't know about that. Well, yeah, no, I could still go. No. Why can't I? I'm not at work at nine, ten o'clock at night. Yeah, but that's when everybody else gets out of work. Who? Five o'clock. So oh, only five. Sure, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you're gonna go to the grocery store and it's gonna be packed. Mm, not at nine, ten o'clock though. Well, and you'll be. Are away. you going to the grocery store at nine and ten o'clock at night when they're closing? Oh, sometimes, it depends on my mood and how much I really feel like dealing with people. <laughs> <laughs> I usually save it for. I mean, and I hate doing that too. Saving it for the weekend because everybody and their mother is there. Oh yeah, I, I regret doing it on a Sunday. I was like, oh, let's go to Costco, get some yeah, few things. I go, go, yeah, I regret this. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, you know, depends on, you know, I'll go with uh, Christina, and uh, she kind of sees it in my face that I'm ready to run over somebody's ankles with the shopping cart because it's just people are inconsiderate. Yeah. You know? And I like to say congratulations because uh, for the next three months you won't be here because yeah. uh, the baby newborn. girl is coming. Congratulations. She'll, uh, she'll be here in soon. Any day she'll be here in. I finally get a little vacation from you. Some vacation. Or, I mean, it's yeah. not really going to be a vacation. It's not going to be a vacation. You'll be up all night. No, nah, I know. I know. But uh, You're going to yeah. be wanting to come back. Yeah, I'm I'm sure I will. And, and you know, it, Christina knows it. Like, she knows. I, I've told her, like, I don't know how, how much I'm, you know, actually going to be on this paternity leave because yeah. <laughs> I may I mean, end up going uh, back to work. Honestly, it's, a, it's a, you'll, you have a great schedule. From six to two thirty, you can't ask for a better schedule. No, you, you got to wake up a little earlier. That that's the hard part. But you know what? You're out at two thirty, and that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you still have most of the day to go. Um, you know, and, and once the baby's here, I'm probably gonna end up switching back over to the eight hours yeah. instead of doing the ten. But you know, uh, again, it's it, we're kind of just floating along here, and we'll yeah. see what happens. Whether I stay at the tens, and you know, because then I get the four days with her all day. Instead of yeah. you know coming home at two thirty, it's nice. I, my opinion, I just don't like you get four days uh, every two weeks kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's you know it's, it's it's nice and it you know it, it has its its cons and its pros. But oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I did it, and I did every Friday instead. Yeah, and it was nice, but it was just long hours and. Yeah, it is, and I mean, it is draining. You know, four thirty, five o'clock. You're getting out of work, and you're yeah. just dead be tired especially then if you're going to the gym after work and it's like yeah it's it's by the time i'm getting home at seven o'clock cooking dinner eight and i'm like yeah you're right back to bed and right yeah. back at work so it, it's just and and then you know what honestly made my decision to change is just it was like clockwork yeah it was it is clock it's a very in, stern schedule clock out gym eat, eat shower shower sleep, and sleep and, yeah right and then got it. everything got pushed so monday through thursday all my uh paperwork i had to do at the firehouse or anything i had to do on my truck it got pushed to friday and friday was just basically a work day yeah, it was a work, it was a work i was day just too. not getting paid for it <laughs> yeah it was just yeah, everything it's just all your personal work yeah it's got to get done and then saturday sunday same thing yeah i mean it happened to me this weekend you know between you know it was don't get me wrong beautiful weather but uh it was a lot of putting the pool up and getting yard work yeah. done and, you know, then Which, going inside and, you know, getting all this work done because I just, I can't do it during the week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, as long as you can kind of maintain and keep like a, you know, somewhat of a free time or a yeah. free schedule, it's, it's not so bad. Um, and I think it's incredible that we're able to get the six to thirty and the ten hour work days. Yeah, and they give us the option. Yeah, yeah, and, and the it shows Matt, it was... you you what you work for. Yeah, and they they're able to work with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of what what Matt said was you know you can kind of pick your own schedules as long as you're doing your forty yeah. hours. It's you know. Kind of on, you know. You put yeah. in the work, they'll they'll definitely. Yeah, and it, it goes to show. It yeah. really does. Is you know, as long as you can work hard and and show these guys that 
you're you know you're working they they do help you out here a lot yeah. and it's it's nice and it's it's very rewarding and, and very comfortable um so yeah i mean it's it's fun it's it's a good job it's it's a lot of fun so if you guys want to want to come down and work with us two idiots we will be hiring soon <laughs> we are hiring yeah well We're yeah hiring. the posts are out posts are out yeah so come on down don't work night shift though because then you got to deal with this idiot what's your feeling about how cl- client co- collaboration yeah collaboration with uh, the clients on how like working with them on like for example pompton pompton lakes uh i mean those guys are great they they you know they they know what they want um but he's very easy very mm-hmm. easy to work with uh you know the collab with with any customer really is is huge um if you grow you know a great relationship with them it's it makes your job so much easier definitely um and i mean all these guys are great they kind of let you have your freedom but they mm-hmm. also know what they want and, and it's, they, they know who they're going to they know that w- this is our standard what we do yeah, and we get it done and right. if they want a little cu- customization on how they want it We'll do it. You just show us what you want, and we'll make up a game plan. And yeah, the, we'll, we'll get it done. The Hallworth truck came out pretty badass when we did that, and you know, changed some stuff up for them. And you know, I, I think they enjoy the the car. And, um, but yeah, it, it's just any any collab that we do with these guys, with anybody that comes to yeah. us. Um, I mean, we don't have much because uh, Mike basically yeah, handles a handles, lot of it. Handles a lot of it, but we do still talk to the customer sometimes on like do you like this how option give them options sure you know and i I pick dan's brain every once in a while and you know try and change you know some stuff up but just try and improve the car a little bit more improve how it how it's done how more safety and yeah and i mean i've done what three or four of these cars for them already and every time i see dan it's you know how you like the cars and the whole department loves them so yeah, it's it's great know. that's a great feeling honestly yeah yeah and especially they're so close to us and we'll, i always see them in the morning so it's like i've built four of them for the durangos and i see them all the time yeah I'm like I, I built that that's and it's, it's still in service yeah no it's it's cool and i mean you know yours are somewhat coming out of service yeah and these newer ones are, are going in service and i mean they're identical there's nothing really different and that's that's kind of the cool part of this is, you know, everything kind of stays consistent. Correct. Um, and it all still stays the same. And, you know, keeping keeping the history and track of what we do, um, you know, between five years and, and now you get into the, you know, a f- car that's five years old, it's going to be the exact same as your brand new car. And it's going to operate the exact same way. I mean, with the newer cars now, they're not lasting as long. I mean, the yeah, use from the departments. And I'm not saying some – misabuse them but there are guys that don't care they you could go look at a police car and then go look at a fire chief's car you, you could know see the difference you could see the difference <laughs> definitely yeah i you know it's because I mean, a lot these of these guys are spending home. 12 hours in these cars it is but you know, i mean what i don't get is like it that's your shop keep it clean yeah. i mean the coffee the coffee amount of coffee we have in the cup holders and stuff when we got to look server something it's like dude we we just had one a couple weeks ago come in and he's like my lights won't shut off and it's a brand new build i'm like oh great we have software issue or something and no it's just coffee (laughs) and he and the funny part is he didn't tell me and i opened up the console and i opened the controller and what do you think i see the bottom of the controller just full of coffee full of full of shit i'm like you you got to take care. I know you, you're on a call. You got a coffee in your hand or a coffee in the cup holder, but you got to take care of your shop. It's yeah. yours. Yeah. And, you know, I've yours for 12 hours. I've had conversations with some guys and, you know, some of the sergeants and they hold their guys accountable. So, you know, cleaning your car at the end of the shift is, is huge and keeping these cars in shape. Um, does everybody do that? No. Probably not. And, you know, it's, comes with the nature of the beast yeah. you're putting putting somebody in a car for 12 hours and then you know right after that somebody else is going into yeah. it 
So. And then it, it comes down to it, oh, this person didn't clean it, so I'm not going to clean it. Right, and, and then it, it just, just it keeps snowballs building up. And it, it builds up all the coffee and yeah, I garbage mean, and stuff. We've definitely seen some nasty cars. Yeah. You know, but I mean, uh, even there's some fire chiefs, honestly. Yeah, there's, no, it's there's not some. Just, that, it's, it's not, not just, just police. PD. No, it's but, definitely not. But most part, the fire department's pretty clean because they take that home. Yeah, it's, it's their personal yeah, it's vehicle their, for their term. Yeah, so they're gonna keep it clean, and we don't always get some guys. Some guys, we don't always get vehicles. Like my department, we we run with one chief's vehicle, and we have two assistant chiefs and one chief. Right. And the assistant chiefs run out of their personal vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, just because we don't got the money. So. Yeah, and we have, you know, three three chiefs. We have the, the town chief and two assistants. Yeah. And then it's five battalions on top of that. But the battalions, you know, take their own cars. But, you know, for the most part, these, you know, the cars that we've we've built for Mawa, the, the, all the cars are clean. Because um, these guys know, like, this is my car yep. for one year and – if I, you know, if I get reelected the next year, it's it's going to be my car again. So. Yeah, so you're going to have to live with it for y- another year. Yeah, exactly. So these guys really do keep their cars clean. Um, so it's, you know, it really depends on the person too, because you know I've seen some some nasty cars. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it just it depends. But it's you know, it comes with the nature of the beast and us building them and you know yep. stuff like that. I've I like building the new ones. It's rather not play with nicer. the old ones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and keep smells keep. nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, stripping, uh, stripping the Durango, Durango for Pompton was was brutal. Kind of, yeah, it was kind of. And, and that's an older partition too, so it's kind of. I kind of like the new partitions we've been installing now. It's a lot easier. It's all yeah. Factory. The, the Troy, the Troy partitions have been very nice. Yeah. Um, I really don't have complaints. Really. Um, other than their nuts and bolts, and you having something to do with building the partitions and the Tahoes and the instructions. Well, that's my I only complaint. I built the more instructions. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I um, I went off with two pictures and said, let's hope for the best, and it kind of it went. Th- it took me two days, honestly. Yeah, no, it's not bad, and I, I mean, you know, it's it's a good product. Um, it, it is. Don't get me wrong, Satina's not bad at all. Yeah. Um, but, but the fact that the only thing I don't like about those partitions is. Just having to drill, you have to mount it, and then you have to hammer the the plastic, the plastics yeah, the, to the get pillars. the for the pillars and all that. And it's like, and then if you don't make it too big or make it too small, it doesn't fit. Yeah, and yeah. Troy's kind of got more of a direct on direct bolt, and, and they go off factory bolts and yeah, stuff, which is so, nice. And we just uh, got to do some trimming, and it's perfect. But yeah. But, you know, we just keep moving along and keep improving. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. We we can't stop improving. Nah. Once we stop, we're going to basi- stop, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's huge, um, you know, especially for all these companies that come out with something newer and better and easier. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just it's not just easier for us, but it's also easier for these officers. Even just, you know, having the seatbelt reversed is huge. So yeah. now you're not reaching over over the, the prisoner. Nope. Um, makes a huge difference, you know, especially for these guys. So stuff like that, there's just little things that, you know, we kind of think of and, you know, kind of change and tweak and make better. All right. Thank you for coming on tonight, today. Uh, thanks right, today. for watching 1075 Chatter, your host for the day. Nicholas and, and co-host uh, guest he wants to be the co-host but <laughs> I think Mark's gonna be Mark would be a better co-host you're not funny <laughs> <laughs> I made you laugh though right no I'm laughing at your stupidity <laughs> um but yeah thank you guys for having me Nick I'll see you back at the shop and if you want a 1075 shirt with me my sweat on it just uh put in the code nick with your sweat on it yeah my afternoon jog or now i got a jump rope yeah no you smell like an elephant no put deodorant on yeah okay smell like flowers (laughs)